Hey everyone, welcome to How to Make an Argument. In this video, we'll learn how to use your natural observations about whatever you're studying to write a coherent, organized argument. Now, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll realize that writing isn't magic. It's a simple process, a craft that just takes practice. In assignments for this course, you'll often be required to make an argument by analyzing texts so that you read, but it's often easier to start by analyzing images. So let's start by analyzing this painting by an artist named James Gilray. If I asked you, what message is the artist conveying about gluttony or greed in this painting? You'll probably first look to the main character and his surroundings to form your answer. You'll notice that he's too fat for his clothing. You'll see he has sort of a pompous expression on his face. His room is untidy and full of leftover food that he hasn't been able to shove into his face. All these observations are necessary to make an argument. They're like pieces of evidence. But you won't have answered the question yet, what message is the artist conveying about gluttony or greed in this painting? To answer that, you'll need to make your own claim based on the evidence. And after a little thought, you might claim the artist is making fun of the lavish, wasteful lifestyle brought about by gluttony or something similar. He's saying something negative about gluttony anyway, and the images in the painting prove it. Well, congratulations. You've gone through the process of analyzing the painting and making an argument. You've made a claim that the artist's message is one of condemning gluttony, and you have evidence to support your claim that the character is fat, his room is messy, etc. That's all argument is. It's your claim, evidence that supports your claim, and to make sure that another person really understands your thinking, it needs to include an explanation why that evidence matters to your claim. A claim is your opinion or idea. It's a statement someone else could argue against. The artist James Gilray is condemning gluttony in his painting. That's a claim. The evidence could be factual information like data or statistics, summary of a text, or direct quotations. It's not opinionated. Someone else couldn't really argue against it. He's too fat for his clothing. He has sort of a pompous expression on his face. The room is untidy. And because someone else can't read your mind, a good argument always includes an explanation why the evidence matters to the claim, which is again your opinion or interpretation. You lead someone by the hand to say why you think the way you do. An argument is not just summarizing what you read or observe. That's a book report. Summary is perfect to use as evidence, but an argument requires your opinions and ideas too. It's not only saying what you like or dislike about what you're studying either. And it's not telling a story from your own life that reminds you of what you're studying. This is the very simple idea behind the structure of any good college essay. That's all it is. Your thesis statement is the main claim that you make in your paper. In your introduction paragraph, it's your big opinion that you're going to prove out. So that your reader can digest your big opinion, you use a smaller piece of that thesis, called a subclaim, in each body paragraph. To convince your reader that your subclaim is valid, you support it with evidence, quotes, paraphrases, summaries, or observations from whatever you studied. And last, you explain clearly to the reader why your evidence matters to your subclaim. It's really very simple, and you can remember it with the acronym C. S-E-E, -E, Subclaim, Evidence, Explanation. Be sure to study the complete How to Organize an Essay handout in the Resources tab of our Blackboard page, which explains this whole essay structure in a bit more detail. Let's take a look at the C structure in an actual body paragraph with another piece of art. This is an engraving from the 1750s by an artist named William Hogarth. Its title is Gin Lane. From the title, you might guess that the engraving has something to do with drinking liquor, and you'd be right. So here's the same question as before. What message is this artist conveying? Pause the video for a minute or two and think about that question. Think about what your own claim might be and answer to it, and what evidence you'd use from the engraving to support your claim.
So what claim did you come up with in answer to that question? Let's pretend you're writing an argument interpreting this engraving, making a critical response about it, and you noticed that there are these two men in the lower left side fighting over a bone with a dog. If you wanted to write a very organized body paragraph in an essay about that detail, you might use S-E-E-C to write something like this. In Gin Lane, one message William Hogarth conveys is that drinking liquor can make people act like animals. For example, a scene in the lower left portion of the engraving shows an intoxicated man fighting with a dog over a bone. The bone is dry and fleshless, but still the man's face is squeezed into a hungry grimace. In fact, the dog appears more lucid than the man does. Comparing these two figures, the viewer gains a clear understanding of how liquor can strip away a person's humanity. Now let's break down the C structure of that body paragraph. We've got your subclaim. In Gin Lane, one message William Hogarth conveys is that drinking liquor can make people act like animals. And then we've got a few pieces of evidence that support the subclaim. And then at the end, we have this nice wrap up that explains very clearly how the evidence matters to the subclaim. The subclaim is opinionated, it's arguable. The paragraph's middle three sentences, the evidence, are details that you can't really argue against. They're just describing the images in the art. This is a good paragraph for an argumentative essay. It makes a clear, well-organized argument. Remember this C structure and you can apply it to any subject you're studying, whether that's a piece of art, a film, an article, data from scientific research, a chapter in a biology, a biology textbook, whatever. Just ask yourself what meanings you can find, allow yourself time to observe the evidence, and form your claim. It's actually much easier to draft ideas for your body paragraphs before you write your thesis statement. Once you know what all your subclaims will be for your essay, you just need to sum them all up in that one big claim at the, in the introduction paragraph of your paper. So let's review. An argument is simply your claim, evidence that supports it, and an explanation why the evidence matters to your claim. An argument is more than just summarizing, telling a personal story, or stating what you like or dislike about whatever you're studying. And always remember C for your body paragraphs. Make a subclaim, give a few pieces of evidence to support it, and explain why the evidence matters to your subclaim. Very simple. It just takes time and thought and a little practice. And if you don't get the hang of it immediately, don't get discouraged. Watch this video again whenever you like, and remember that writing is not magic. Writing is a craft, just like learning to play the guitar, or building a rocking chair, or becoming good at a sport. Don't give up. Good luck.